Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Troy Clayton, and joining us today from the Royal Australian Navy is Petty Officer Ben Hale. We warmly welcome the family of Corporal George Edward Jeffs, whose story will be told shortly. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that love and support them. The live stream of this ceremony, of this ceremony is made possible by the Return and Services League of Australia and the RSL and Services Club Association. We welcome members who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, reeds will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by family, visitors to the memorial, and students on behalf of Eleonora State High School from Eleonora, Queensland. If you're able, please stand and join in singing the national anthem. Thank you. If you're able, please be seated. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's First World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozier, France, in the depths of bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn their loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved. And here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we'll read the story behind just one of those on the Royal of Honor, which lists the names of more than 103,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and on operations for more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Reed's all floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today, we remember and pay tribute to Corporal George Edward Jeffs. George Jeffs was born on the 20th of July, 1919, in Yarram, Victoria, the son of Daniel and Mary Jeffs. He enlisted in the 2nd Australian Imperial Force at Melbourne on the 11th of June, 1940. Having joined a training battalion, after a few months of initial training, he was posted in August to the newly formed 2nd 23rd Battalion, part of the 26th Brigade in the 9th Division. Jeffs joined his new unit at Bongilla in Victoria and left for the Middle East in November. In early 1941, the 9th Division moved to Serenica to complete its training. Despite British successes at the start of the year against the German-led counterattacks, the 9th Division fell back to Tobruk. Jeffs and his battalion helped to defend Tobruk for eight months, manning a series of concrete pillboxes located in a semicircle around the town. In October 1941, most of the 9th Division was evacuated by sea. The 2nd 23rd sailed to Alexandria before being transferred to Palestine and then Syria for rest and garrison duties. By July 1942, German and Italian forces had reached El Alamein in Egypt and the war in North Africa had become critical. The 9th Division was rushed from Syria to the El Alamein area where it held the northern sector for almost four months as the British prepared for an offence under a new commander. Orders for the first attack were issued on the 7th of July. Relieved on the 1st of November, the 2nd 23rd Battalion had 29 killed, 172 wounded and six missing. Alamein was a great, although bloody, success for the Allies. And by the 6th of November, Axis forces were retreating. Jeffs, who had been promoted to corporal, left Alamein in early December and headed back to Gaza in Palestine, where he and his comrades participated in the 9th Division Parade before leaving Palestine in January 1943, reaching Sydney at the end of February. In Australia, Jeffs attended a junior leaders course at Red Bank in Brisbane in May and June 1943. With the battalion reorganised for jungle operations, in early September, the 2nd 23rd participated in the amphibious landing at Red Beach, northwest of Ley. Shortly before the landing, the invasion fleet was attacked by six Japanese fighters and three bombers. Most of the Japanese bombs missed the Allied ships, but one bomb hit the landing craft carrying the battalion headquarters, killing the battalion commander and the ship's captain. The landing craft, however, made it to shore and the 2nd 23rd took part in the fighting around Ley. Finchhaven and Saddleburg. The plan to capture Saddleburg, known as Operation Fleetfoot, was developed in early November. The 2nd 23rd was involved in daily patrolling as a build-up of supplies and artillery took place. The men became accustomed to the surrounding country and had information on tracks, topography, and updating incorrect maps. 
With a command post established, a Kumawa village, artillery brought down at first light on the 17th of November, 1943. B Company pushed into its area and found it clear, moving on to Saddleburg Road and contacting the 2nd 48th Battalion. A Company moved along the western track, pushing back Japanese troops, joined by C Company, which carried out an outflanking manoeuvre. The battalion's war diary notes read, these moves proved always to be long and arduous tasks and showed how doggedly the Japanese rear parties, although small in number, could resist our advances. Frontal attack was impossible. When the enemy did withdraw, he did so at night, almost without exception. While the operation would prove successful, the fighting around Sattelberg claimed 49 Australians killed and a further 118 wounded. Corporal George Jeffs was killed on the first day of the Battle of Sattelberg. He was 24 years old. Today, his remains lie in Lay War Cemetery under the inscription, your duty nobly done, dearly loved by mother and father. His name is listed on the roll of honour on my right, amongst almost 40,000 Australians who died while serving in the Second World War. His photograph is displayed today by the pool of reflection. This is but one of the many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Corporal George Edward Jeffs, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms, and in the hope of a better world. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We'll remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget.
we leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub of Gallipoli with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. On behalf of the director, staff and volunteers, thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial today and for your continued support during the Memorial's development project. We wish you all a very pleasant evening. Thank you.